At the end of lesson six, I showed you some really cool geometrically perfect crop circles in the flower of life form. Most people didn't like that or care. So instead I offer you this. This intense drawing was done by Leonardo da Vinci, proving that he actually studied the flower of life form. In fact, over 200 drawings of his were found all studying different angles and proportions, complete with descriptions of each one. The editor of the book who published these lost drawings didn't really know what they were. So he just said, this is how he came up with his gear inventions. Leonardo was able to invent such intricate inventions and designs because he studied divine proportion. Also, Leonardo was a master mason, and it's clear that he most likely got his original knowledge from them. Is the flower of life, among other things, the secret information that the masons have been keeping secret for the last thousand years? <laughs>
This is not what we are talking about. What we're seeing as the various dimensional levels has more to do with music and harmonics than anything else. A piano has eight white keys from C to C, which is the familiar octave, and in between there are five black keys. Together this creates what is called the chromatic scale, which is 13 notes, well actually 12, with the 13th being the first in the next octave. So from one C to the next is really 13 steps, not eight. This also correlates with the seven, eight, and 13 chakra system I mentioned in lesson two. Keeping that in mind, I wanna show you a sine wave. Sine waves correspond with light and the electromagnetic spectrum and the vibration of sound. We're all very familiar with this. In this entire reality we're in, every single thing is based on sine waves. There are no exceptions to this except for maybe spirit and void. Quantum physics and quantum mechanics looks at everything in the reality of one of two ways. You can look at anything, like the computer you're watching this video on, to be made up of tiny particles like atoms. Or you can forget about that idea completely and look at it as a vibration, a waveform, such as electromagnetic fields or even sound. If you look at it as atoms, the laws can be seen to fit that model. But if you look at it as waveforms, the laws can be seen to fit that model. Both of these systems come out of the flower of life, one being the one we just looked at, fruit of life to Metatron's cube and beyond, and the other being this beautiful mess of a picture. Just looking at it hurts my head. Everything in this world is a waveform or can be seen as sound. All things, your bodies, planets, absolutely everything are a waveform. If you choose this particular way of looking at reality and then superimpose that view over the reality of the harmonics of music, we can begin to talk about dimensions. The dimensional levels are nothing but different base rate wavelengths. The only difference between this dimension and any other is the length of its basic waveform. It's just like a radio set. Turn the dial, you pick up a wavelength. It's the same with dimensions. If you were to change the wavelength of your consciousness and in doing so change all of your body patterns to a wavelength different from this universe, you would literally disappear out of this world and reappear in the one you were tuned in. It's been theorized that the base rate wavelength that we're currently living in is 7.23 centimeters. There's a few reasons for this. In a spiritual sense, the 7.23 wavelength is Om, the Hindu sound of the universe. Maybe that's why Oming is such a powerful tool in meditation. Not only that, but if you were to take 100 people and measure the distance between their eyes, the average length is 7.23. Same with the distance from the tip of our chins to the tip of our noses, and the distance across our palms and between our chakras. This 7.23 length is located throughout our bodies in various ways because we are emerged within this particular dimension. There's another reason as well. Bell Laboratories found this wavelength when they were setting up the microwave system around the United States. They found static in their system because they chose a wavelength just slightly longer than 7.23 for their system. In order to get rid of the static, they did something that we as a planet are still suffering from. They upped the power 50,000 times over what we would normally need, which created a very powerful field so that the 7.23 wavelength would not interfere. It's for those reasons that I believe 7.23 is the wavelength of our dimension. As you go up in dimensional levels, the wavelength gets shorter and shorter with higher and higher energy. As you go down in levels, the wavelength gets longer and longer with lower and lower energy, more and more dense. Just as with a piano, there's a space between the notes so that when you hit one note, there's a very definite place where the next note is. In this waveform universe we exist in, there's a very definite place where the next dimensional level exists. It's specific wavelength relative to this one. Most cultures in the cosmos have a basic understanding of this and understand how to change between dimensions. However, because of certain events that happened on Earth 13,000 years ago, we have all forgotten, but we're about to remember. So if we show each note in the chromatic scale as a circle, we have 13 circles. Each circle represents a white or black key, and the shaded circle at the end would be the 13th note that begins the next octave. This circle here represents the third dimension. This is where we are, and this circle next to it would be the fourth. In lesson three, we talked about channeling, and this is typically where channeled beings are. This is also where you explore when you are astral projecting or lucid dreaming. You'll notice now that the musical system goes upwards and downwards forever, octaves over octaves over octaves. Theoretically, this is how the universe goes too, an infinite spectrum of universes in both directions going upwards and downwards forever. I mean, come on, we thought our universe was big, but everything in our universe, as far as we can see, well, that's just this one dimension. You may have heard people talk about 144 dimensions and how 144 relates to other spiritual subjects. This is because there are 12 notes in an octave and 12 overtones between each note. 12 times 12 equals 144 dimensional levels. To be specific, there are 12 major dimensions and 132 minor dimensions within each octave, though in truth, this progression probably goes on forever. The diagram we've been looking at represents one octave. The 13 note repeats, and then there's another octave after that. Looks like I'm about done for the day. I wanna show you this. I was watching Ancient Aliens not long ago, and one of the natives who has communication with beings in higher dimensions told the man who was interviewing him that they have always been here, even right here where we're sitting right now, but you just don't see them. They're in a different frequency. And no one really got what he meant. So that's kind of a fresh perspective on that. 